magical. Believe it. Whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury. Shut up, you idiot. Hey, it's me, Goku. Naruto and Jiraiya now reverse summoned back to Mount Miyaboku by Lord Fukasaku and Lady Shima stand faced with the homeland of the Toads. Jiraiya feels reminiscence while Naruto sits in awe. He is on the verge of passing out though, as he would swiftly do after taking a quick look around. But upon him fading into unconsciousness, he would sit back up, which Jiraiya would say I guess you weren't so tired after all, kid, with a Rasengan quickly being thrown in his face. He'd barely be able to dodge as Naruto, now bearing a very deep voice, says, Why is this kid so exhausted? He must have gone through hell. This obviously being Kurama, surprising both the Toads and Jiraiya himself. Jiraiya had heard this voice once before, as he would say, So, Ninetales, you've finally taken a hold of my student's body, as he jumps back, preparing to fight once again, mounting with both Lady Shima and Lord Fukasaku, as he prepares to fight. The Ninetales would stand, his eyes turning red, both bearing Black Tomo and a slit. He would then say that he's not interested in fighting the Sanin. He hadn't even intended on taking over the body, and thus would lead to a conversation, one rather civil for the Demon Fox, between itself and Jiraiya. It could not move much as its chakra was in the process of healing Naruto, and leaving us to now find out that in the time where he was fighting against pain and the seal had broken to such a degree, Naruto had actually been talking to his father in his mindscape. Kurama could have obviously taken over in this moment, but had stayed back. Minato had attempted to fix the seal, but was unsuccessful. Thus, Naruto knows of his broken seal and the consequences of Kurama leaking. Kurama would explain that after the many times he's taken over this host, he has come to a clause. He doesn't want the boy dead, nor anyone around him. He just wants to be left alone. The occasional stretch bearing the boy's body helps, of course, but he's not here to harm. And, as you might think, he would answer any questions about his eyes. He would probably make up an excuse of sorts, saying that uh, it was because of Madara or even the second coming before he was sealed into Naruto or so on and so forth. Thus meaning that the boy does bear the Sharingan. This leaves both the Toads and Jiraiya amazed. The Sharingan is a dojutsu of massive proportions and strength as it was able to control obviously the Ninetales. Which Jiraiya, even though prepared to have fought, did not have any confidence in his victory. Thus was also prepared to give up his own life to protect the living sake of the Toads. Since not even the chief Gamabunta could have held him off for long. But, nevertheless, the Nine Tails is at a course. He wishes to return to the seal and let the boy be. Maybe they can strike a deal in the future. He can get out more often, and the boy can use more of his power. At first, Jiraiya would be defensive, to say the very least, as this is still the demon fox we're talking about. But the more he brings up the term demon fox, Kurama would get pissed, saying that, always calling me the demon fox, the QB, like, I have a name, but it's not like any of you care as a hiccup would come, as Kurama would fade back off into the seal, returning a sleeping Naruto. This would leave, obviously, Jiraiya and the Toads to speak, as they want Naruto to obviously first learn Sage Mode, and then with his new entombment with nature and his surroundings, to conspire or at least communicate with the Nine-Tailed Fox. And thus we proceed. Naruto would eventually awaken, and thus they would follow along with him staying on Mount Miyaboku, preparing to go through Sage Mode training. 
Here he would grow accustomed to the livelihood he is currently living or he is about to live in as he would become friends with every toad he comes across. But nevertheless, Jiraiya wants him to awaken the Sharingan. He has an idea. There would obviously be a visual difference when he channels Chakra or what we call Sage Mode Eyes as he would then convince Naruto to channel Chakra directly to his eyes to see if they can awaken some sort of Sage Sharingan. With this proceeding, we see Naruto following along almost exactly as he did in canon, but this time with Jiraiya trying to help and direct his student, and occasionally scolding and basically bashing him over the head like he always does. Thus, we would end with Naruto finally getting Sage Mo done, at least for the first time. Jiraiya upon seeing this would tell him to channel chakra to his eyes, enhance his perception, this time on purpose, as he would be able to see a lot more of the world. As he proceeds with his sensei's request, his eyes gain a purple hue, with three tomo accompanying a horizontal slit across his eye. This is obviously emerging of his purple chakra coloring, this time closer to a blue in hue, so it's a lot lighter and less noticeable, instead of the normal yellow. As he looks in the water to see his reflection, he sees the difference in his eyes, but as he looks upon others, he could tell the difference in their chakra. Off of himself, he could see a weird purple chakra flowing, but accompanying it an odd green one too. The toads bear majority green with some blue accompanying it, with Jiraiya obviously at current state being completely blue. He would obviously have questions to ask as Jiraiya would explain the different meanings of the different colors he is seeing. Blue would be the representative of normal or standard chakra, whilst green would accompany nature energy. Purple is unique to Naruto, as red is to tailed beast. This would obviously now lead to an explanation of Jiraiya giving Naruto a theory on his chakra. Once again, this is something he had already done, but this time with more accuracy and more information presented in his words, as he would now accidentally reveal the conversation he had maybe a month or a few weeks earlier with the Ninetales. At first, Naruto would feel conflicted as his emotions say he should be angry towards his teacher for not revealing this information earlier. But on the other hand, logic depicts that he had already known the Ninetales had taken control of his body on multiple occasions or at least had the potential to. So, he doesn't know if an outburst is necessary, but before Naruto could act on any of his intuitions, a toad from the village hidden in the leaves would appear. This is a toad Naruto, or at least Jiraiya, had requested to accompany Tsunade. This toad reveals that the shinobi Jiraiya and Naruto had fought in the rain, had currently popped up in the leaf, and are currently launching a full-out assault, as a lar large portion of the shinobi force had already been wiped out, so their presence is requested. Obviously, Jiraiya would want Naruto to hang back as his sage mode is imperfect, as he cannot connect to or merge, I guess, with either Lord Fukusaku or Lady Shima. But, nevertheless, Naruto would have an idea. To leave clones to generate this as he does not have the time to test it, they would head back to the leaf. Jiraiya would present the idea that Naruto test it while they're preparing to head back. Obviously, this is maybe a 5 minute period, so Naruto would let it be. By the time he had finished preparing, he had not gotten a full amount of sage energy from the return of the shadow clone, but he had gotten a large sum. So, he would leave behind about 5 clones, at least accompanied by one of the toads. At this point, I would believe them to either be Gamakichi or Gamatatsu as... Obviously, Lord Fukusaku and Lady Shima would be accompanying Jiraiya this time. As preparation came to close and Naruto's clones were ready, Jiraiya would present Naruto himself with a red cloak representing his heritage. 
Naruto, obviously this time knowing the connection the cloak bears to his father, would be ever so grateful for his sensei, even forgiving the prior neglect of informing him of the nine tails overtaking of his body. But with no grudge held and them being reverse summoned back to the leaf upon Gamma Bunta, accompanied by Gamma Ken and Gamma Hero, they stand now faced with a destroyed village. At first, this would enrage both Naruto and Jiraiya, but under the guidance of Lord Fukasaku and Lady Shima, they are both calmed down and said to focus on the battle at hand and do not let their rage take a hold of them. They would explain that Naruto only has about 30 minutes of Sage Mode left, so he must proceed carefully. As they see on the horizon a floating person, Nagato himself, accompanied by someone who seemed like an angel at first. Bright white wings and a dark cloak, blue hair to sport. This is Konan, accompanying her friend and leader, as they now stand above the leaf, awaiting Naruto and Jiraiya's arrival. The remaining paths, at least those that had not been taken care of previously, surround the battlefield, looking for opportunities as Naruto and Jiraiya approach. At first, summons are thrown. This obviously causes the summons of the Toad Sages, or Naruto and Jiraiya, meaning Gamabunta, Gamahiro, and Gamaken once again, to take place in bout. Thus, Naruto would go off seeking the summoning path as he knows the prior destruction it had caused in the rain, trying to obviously put a stop to its attacks and ruthless continuous summoning of these beasts. On the other hand, Naruto was faced with his student, or at least previous students, Nagato and Konan. Konan would attempt to keep Nagato back, but Nagato's words cannot be held as he would ruthlessly start berating his sensei, blaming him not only for Yahiko's death, but his own ascent to madness. This would lead to a pretty long battle between Jiraiya and Nagato, with Naruto eventually once again needing to interfere with Konan after failing to locate the animal path, and thus leading into a bout. Obviously, more pains would pop up to try and help the original, but Naruto would be quick to destroy. And in this case, the pain that had accompanied the uh, King of Hell, as per usual, is destroyed by Konohamaru, meaning that Nagato has no option of bringing them back, as he is in face-to-face -face combat with Jiraiya. So, after more and more pains are destroyed, and Naruto near effortlessly predicts every single one of Konan's moves and dodges, counters, and so on and so forth, he is still unaware of the Sharingan's presence, believing this comes from the rare sage vision he currently possesses. On the other hand, Jiraiya, Lord Fukasaku, and Lady Shima are currently holding up pretty well against Nagato. No paths currently interrupting, and Naruto holding off Konan pretty well, Nagato was eventually driven to a position acquaint to loss. He would at first be in denial, but when Jiraiya would attempt to speak, Naruto would take precedence instead, as he would go on to talk about everything he did in canon, basically pointing out the wrongs that Nagato had done. He had strived for peace, but he did it through pain. He tried to push his pain onto everybody else, instead of showing them the light, the world with no pain, the world he is trying to create. And, as per usual, Nagato would understand why Jiraiya had taken on Naruto as a student, since Naruto was the child of prophecy, and not he, not the fourth, and no one that came before them. Naruto was the one that would set this world free. And thus, he would cast the Rene Reaper Rebirth on large scale, restoring all the lives lost within this period. But, along with this comes a grieving Conan. At first, she would attempt to attack, but some meager words from her sensei would leave her to collapse, tears falling down Naruto's arm. 
She, of course, knew neither her sensei nor Naruto was to blame, but she still grieved the loss of her last comrade, with Naruto saying that she's always welcome to leave, she could always stay. But after regaining her bearings, or at least regaining her footing, she would be off with Nagato's corpse to keep them out of Akatsuki hands. Of course, Kurama inside of Naruto wishes for the opportunity to get even more powerful eyes, but Naruto is not near injured enough for him to take over. So, Konan would be off, the remaining paths, bodies would be destroyed, and Naruto and Jiraiya would be left to find their comrades.